I smile. The dentist appointment. My dentist called my house the other day. He told me I needed my teeth cleaned. I set up an appointment to see him on Saturday, June the 10th. When I got to my dentist's office, I had to sit in the waiting room. There were other people ahead of me. They finally called my name. I went into his room and sat down on a big blue chair. They leaned it back. A bright light was turned on. It hurt my eyes, so I closed them. My dentist asked me to open my mouth. I did. I thought my mouth was very big, but he told me to open it even wider. Soon he began poking around to see if I had any cavities. He flossed my teeth and put fluoride around my teeth too. The fluoride tasted like bubblegum. I had to spit into a dish-like bowl. It squirted out water. My dentist kept asking me questions. I couldn't answer because there were weird tools in my mouth. When I tried answering back, he seemed to understand, though. His helper came into the room. She asked me to open my mouth again. I had to clamp down on something that felt like rubber. She put a big camera-type machine right next to my cheek. She did this on the other side of my face as well. They took two pictures of my teeth. It was really cool. The dentist told me my teeth were perfect. I didn't have any problems. I could go home. See you next year, he said. The Circus Wow! A big tent was in the middle of the town's parking lot. We were going to a three-ring circus. I couldn't wait for it to begin. Inside and outside of the tent, toys, balloons, and food were being sold. All of the children were so very excited. Inside the tent, we found good seats so we could see everything. The band started to play loud music, and the ringmaster came out with a big, tall hat on his head. In one ring, there were small animals, dogs, monkeys, and parrots doing tricks. The dogs were dressed in funny clothes, and so were the monkeys. They rode on bicycles, danced, and climbed ladders. There were wild tigers and lions in a big round wire cage. A man with a whip was inside the cage with them. He had them trained to jump through a hoop of fire and to roll over. He even kissed them. He was very brave. During the break in the middle of the circus, funny clowns came out and did silly things. They had happy faces and sad faces. Some had big red noses that honked if you squeezed them. There were rides on elephants, too. I didn't go on one because it cost too much money. The last act took up the whole tent. It was the acrobats. They hung from their teeth, their feet, and their necks high up in the air. They also swung high up in the air and flew to each other. It's kind of scary to watch because I was afraid they might fall. I had a very good time at the circus. However, my tummy felt kind of sick from all the cotton candy and junk food I ate. First Date Ring, ring. The phone is ringing. My mother answers it. Hello, she says. It is for me. When I pick up the phone, I hear a boy's voice. It is a boy I go to school with. This boy is very nice, and he is cute, too. He asks me if I want to go out for dinner with him tonight. I say yes. He's going to pick me up at 5.30 p.m. in the evening. He has a nice red car. Before he picks me up, I have to find an outfit to wear. I am nervous and don't know what to wear. So my sister picks out an outfit for me. I feel excited and have the sensation of butterflies in my stomach. The inside of my hands are damp, too. I put on my outfit and do my hair. My sister gives me some nice clips to put in my hair. Ding dong! The doorbell buzzes. My date is here. I hurry to the door so I can greet him. He tells me that I look nice 
and that we are going to a place called M.T. Belly's. When we arrive at M.T. Belly's, there is loud music playing. A smiling waitress comes who serves us our food. I order a large Caesar salad. My date orders steak. When it arrives, the food looks and is delicious. The waitress asks us if we want dessert after we've finished. But we are too full. So we ask for our bill to pay. My date pays for the meal. I brought money just in case we would share the cost. When we leave the restaurant, we go for a walk by the river. It is a beautiful night. I am enjoying my first date. I am laughing and having fun. It is time for us to go home. So my date takes me home. I smile and thank him for the great time. I hope he'll ask me out again. Easter. Traditionally, Easter has been one of the most important holidays of the Christian religion. For Christians, the Easter holiday celebrates the death of Jesus Christ, who died for the benefit of all people. The exact date when Easter is celebrated is different each year, but it is always held in early spring, during March or April. There are two very important days that make up the Easter holiday, which occurs during the spring season. The first of these days is called Good Friday. Christians recognize Good Friday as the day when Jesus suffered and died on behalf of humanity. The second of these days is called Easter Sunday. Easter Sunday occurs two days after Good Friday. Christians celebrate Easter Sunday as the day when Jesus rose from the dead and went to heaven. For Christians, Easter is the most solemn holiday of the year. Many people attend church services on Good Friday and on Easter Sunday. Easter is also a time for celebration. Some Easter traditions come from old springtime festivals that existed even before Christianity. One of the traditions associated with Easter is the painting of Easter eggs. People take chickens' eggs, make them hollow, and then paint them with beautiful colors. Some people paint very beautiful and complex designs on the Easter eggs. Another Easter tradition is the Easter bunny. According to tradition, the Easter bunny is a magical rabbit that visits the homes of children on the night before Easter Sunday. The Easter Bunny hides chocolate candies shaped like eggs throughout the child's house. On the morning of Easter Sunday, the children must search throughout the house to find these many hidden treats. The Easter holiday is an important time, both as a religious holiday and as a celebration of springtime. Learning to drive. Each year, many young people learn to drive a car. For many people. Learning to drive is important because the car is an important method of transportation in many places. Before learning to drive a car, it is important to understand the rules of the road. A beginning driver should already understand the many signs that are found along the roads. Also, the student driver should know the many rules about changing lanes, turning, stopping, and many other aspects of driving. In addition, the driver should be familiar with the way the car is operated. It is important to know how to use the lights, signals, brakes, accelerator, and steering wheel. When a person starts learning to drive, it may take some time to become skillful. It takes some practice to become an expert in driving a car. One must become familiar with steering, speeding up, and slowing down. At first, it is good to practice driving in a large open space, such as an empty parking lot. Here, one can practice without being a danger to anyone. When a person gains some skill in driving, it is then safe enough to practice driving on a road. Of course, a student driver must still be very careful. He or she should always have an expert driver in the car with him or her. Many beginning drivers take driving lessons from professional instructors who can teach safe driving techniques. Eventually, the young driver is ready for a driving test, which is needed to obtain a regular driver's license. 
This test is supervised by a government official. In the driving test, the driver must show that he or she can control the car with great skill by being able to make turns and to park the car in small spaces. But he or she must also show respect for the rules of the road by driving at a proper speed and obeying all traffic signs and signals. Of course, even when one has obtained a driver's license, it is always important to drive carefully and responsibly. Halloween. The holiday called Halloween is celebrated on October 31st of each year. Halloween is not an official holiday. Everyone goes to work or to school on Halloween, just as on any other day. But Halloween is still one of the holidays that children like the most. Why do children like Halloween so much? There are two reasons: costumes and candy. On the evening of October 31st, children dress up in strange and unusual costumes. They wear costumes that may look like a witch, a monster, or many other weird things. Putting on these scary costumes is a lot of fun for children. After the children put on their costumes, they walk from house to house during the evening. The children carry large bags with them. At each house, they stop. And knock at the door. When an adult opens the door, the children shout, "Trick or treat!" The adult who opens the door pretends to be frightened and then puts pieces of candy into each child's open bag. At the end of the evening, the children have visited many houses and have collected much candy. During the next several days, they can feast upon the sweet candies that they have received. Another Halloween tradition is very unusual. In each house, a family gets a very large, round orange vegetable called a pumpkin. They cut a hole in the top of the pumpkin and empty out the flesh and seeds of the vegetable. Then they cut holes in the side of the pumpkin so that it appears to have eyes, a nose, and a mouth. When the carving is finished, the pumpkin looks almost like a person's face. When the pumpkin has been carved to look like a face, people place a light inside the pumpkin so that the vegetable seems to glow in the dark. This strange-looking face is called a jack-o'-lantern. On Halloween evening, one can see many of these jack-o'-lanterns, some of which are very beautifully carved. Halloween is truly a fun and interesting holiday, especially for children. My job. I work at a conservation park called Balls Falls. I've only worked there for three weeks now. I am a tour guide, and I tell people the history of all the old buildings there. Somebody told me that one of the houses I work in is haunted. Now I get chills every time I walk into that house. My boss told me that the stories aren't real, but I have an active imagination. Balls Falls is very beautiful. It has two different waterfalls: the upper falls and the lower falls. There used to be tons of water cascading over them, which turned a big water wheel to grind grain. However, through the years, the amount of water has really lessened. I love working at Balls Falls because I get to work outside a lot. I'm getting a tan in July and August. I will be working with kids there at a day camp. I am getting ready now, making different crafts and thinking up fun new games to play. I can't wait to start working with them. I think that will be the best part of the summer. I will be going to work tomorrow. I usually have to work from 9 a.m. to 4:30 p.m. I also like the people I work with. They are very nice. Come to Balls Falls, and I'll give you a tour. Life in outer space. People have often wondered about whether or not there is life beyond the planet Earth. For years, the idea of intelligent life on other planets has been very popular. Many books and movies tell stories of what those forms of life might be like.
Many scientists believe that very simple forms of life are likely to exist on many other planets. Under the right conditions, simple life forms might arise. Those conditions, which include moisture and warmth, might occur in many parts of the universe. Fewer scientists believe that very intelligent forms of life are likely to exist on many other planets. For intelligent life to evolve, a very long period of time is needed. During that time, the conditions on a planet must not be too harsh. Otherwise, the evolving life forms will die. The amount of water, heat, and various chemicals must be just right. If not, then complex life might never evolve. The conditions needed for intelligent life to evolve are very unlikely to occur on any one planet. However, some scientists believe that intelligent life might be common in the universe. Because there are so many stars and planets in the universe, there might be a few places that have intelligent life. However, those places are probably very, very far away. Other scientists disagree. They think that the conditions needed for intelligent life are extremely rare. Because of this, our planet might be the only place that has intelligent life. So far, it is impossible to know whether or not there are intelligent beings on other planets. But even if those beings do exist, it seems very unlikely that we will ever meet them. Methods of Transportation In the modern age, people often travel long distances. Sometimes people travel for reasons related to their work. Sometimes they travel as tourists. And sometimes people travel to visit relatives and friends. There are many different ways that people can travel. Some forms of transportation move people along the ground. Other methods of transportation move people across the water or through the air. Airplanes provide the fastest method of traveling. Modern jet airliners travel at about 1,000 kilometers per hour. These airplanes cruise through the skies almost 10 kilometers above the level of the sea. Jet airplanes allow people to travel great distances in a short time. For example, it is possible to fly across a great ocean, such as the Pacific or the Atlantic, in several hours. Ships were once the only way to travel across the oceans. Before airplanes, it took many weeks or months to travel around the world. Today, many people still travel by ship when crossing smaller bodies of water. Some ships, called ferries, allow people to bring their cars with them onto the ship. Some people also like to travel by ship as part of a holiday. These holiday ships, called cruise ships, stop in several interesting ports along the voyage. Trains are very popular in many places. In some places, such as Japan and France, trains travel at high speeds of about 300 kilometers per hour. These trains move people throughout the country very quickly and efficiently. Trains are also used to move people over short distances, such as the trip from one's home to one's workplace. Buses and cars are also widely used for transportation. Some people travel by bus or car for only short trips, but sometimes buses and cars are used for very long journeys. In North America, many people have driven across Canada or the United States in their cars. The wide, smooth roads allow cars and buses to travel quickly from one place to another. There are many different methods of transportation. Which one do you think is the best? A ghost. One dark and gloomy night, I was sitting in my bedroom reading ghost stories. The stories were very scary. A storm was brewing outside my window. The wind began to howl, and the trees shook and bent in the wind. Lightning started to flash across the sky. I felt uneasy as I heard the low rumble of thunder. I glanced around my room. The shadows were deep and dark. The ghost stories were making my imagination play tricks on me. I thought that the shadows were moving. I looked under my bed to make sure that nothing was under there. I hid under the covers and peeked out. I was starting to hear things. A big streak of lightning flashed across the sky, and a loud clap of thunder made me jump. I was very nervous. 
All of a sudden, I heard a noise. It was coming from my closet. I thought that it must be a ghost. I looked out from under my covers and waited for the ghost to appear. My face was white, and I was very, very scared. Then I heard the noise again. Yes, there was definitely a rustling in my closet. I stayed very still and did not make a sound. I watched the closet and hoped that the ghost would not come flying out at me. Something started to come out of the closet. I squeezed my eyes shut. I didn't dare look at the ghost. I heard it come out of the closet. I felt it jump up on my bed. I was still too scared to look. Then the ghost made a noise. It said, Meow. I opened my eyes and saw my kitten standing there. It was my kitten that had made the rustling noises in the closet. I laughed and felt very foolish. I have decided not to read ghost stories on dark, stormy nights. I think my imagination plays tricks on me when I read ghost stories on nights like that. The Planets of Our Solar System The planet on which we live is called the Earth. Our planet is constantly moving around the sun, and each year the Earth travels all the way around the sun. But there are many other planets that also travel around the sun. Together with the sun, the planets, and various other bodies, the Earth is part of our solar system. The planet that is closest to the sun is Mercury. Mercury is extremely hot, and it is much smaller than the Earth. The second planet from the sun is Venus. Venus is about the same size as the Earth. Venus is also very hot. The Earth is the third planet from the sun. The Earth is unusual among the planets because it has such a large moon. The Earth is bigger than the moon, but the moon is still quite large. It takes about one month for the moon to travel around the Earth. The fourth planet from the sun is Mars. Mars is known for its red color. Mars is smaller and colder than the Earth. Mars has two very small moons. After the planet Mars, there are many small bodies called the asteroids. These rocky objects are much smaller than the planets. The first four planets are all made of rock and metal. The remaining planets, however, are mostly made of frozen gases. The fifth planet is called Jupiter. Jupiter is the largest planet. It has many moons that travel around it, and it also has a large red spot. The sixth planet is called Saturn. Saturn is the second largest planet, and it is famous for the wide rings that surround it. These rings are made up of many smaller objects that are found in the same area. The seventh planet is called Uranus. The eighth planet is called Neptune. These planets are also gas giants, but they are smaller than Jupiter and Saturn. Both Uranus and Neptune are so far from the Sun that scientists only discovered these planets during the past few hundred years using telescopes. The other planets had all been visible to curious people for many thousands of years. The ninth planet is called Pluto. Pluto is very small, and it is much more rocky than the gas giants. Some scientists believe that Pluto is not really a planet at all. They suggest that Pluto is the largest of many asteroids that are found at the edge of the solar system. The solar system is a vast place. So far, people have not traveled beyond the moon, but perhaps someday human astronauts will visit the other planets of our solar system. Being a Good Citizen Every society has laws that regulate the way people behave. A good citizen should obey laws. However, there is more to being a good citizen than merely obeying laws. There are many other things that people can do to make their society a pleasant one for every person. One way to be a good citizen is to be polite in everyday activities. For example, when passing through a door, a considerate person will hold the door open for a person who is close behind. 
Holding doors open is especially important when someone is carrying a heavy load. Being a good citizen is very important when traveling on the roads and streets. Pedestrians, bicyclists, and car drivers should all follow the rules of the road. Bicyclists should yield to pedestrians, and car drivers should yield to both bicyclists and pedestrians. Drivers should also allow other drivers to merge into their lanes. Also, drivers should avoid honking their horns except when this is necessary. A good citizen will also avoid doing things that interfere with others. For example, a considerate person does not smoke cigarettes in areas where this might irritate others. Also, a polite person avoids playing music so loudly that other people will be annoyed. And, of course, a good citizen avoids littering or making a mess. Other ways of being a good citizen involve greater effort. Some people serve their community by doing volunteer work of some kind. Other people help by donating money to a charity. Another way to serve the community is to donate blood. Blood donors are needed so that there will be enough blood available to help people who are sick or injured. Being a good citizen is very helpful for the community, and it also gives a feeling of satisfaction and pride. Visiting the Doctor When people feel sick, they go to a doctor. But sometimes people visit the doctor even when they are not sick. Doctors can perform a medical checkup. To find out if a person is healthy. By performing this physical examination, the doctor can identify any health problems that might be developing. During a checkup, the doctor examines your eyes, ears, and throat. The doctor uses a small flashlight to examine the eyes, ears, and throat. It is important to make sure that the eyes react normally to changes in light. It is also important to make sure that the ears and throat have a normal appearance. When the doctor examines your throat, he or she will ask you to open your mouth wide and say, Ah! The doctor uses a stethoscope to examine the patient's heartbeat. The stethoscope hangs around the doctor's neck. By using a stethoscope, a doctor can hear the patient's heartbeat very clearly. While checking the patient's heart, the doctor also listens carefully to make sure that the patient's breathing is normal. The doctor also checks the patient's blood pressure. Blood pressure is measured by placing a cuff around the arm. Air is then pumped into the cuff, and this allows blood pressure to be measured. Having very high blood pressure or very low blood pressure is not good for one's health. It is better to be in between. Another part of the examination is a test of the reflexes. The doctor tests the patient's reflexes by gently hitting his or her knee with a small hammer. If a person has normal reflexes, the leg will extend suddenly. Sometimes a doctor may give injections using a needle as an extra part of the checkup. These injections, called vaccinations, prevent the patient from developing certain illnesses. Medical checkups can help to maintain health, but people should also maintain their health by leading a healthy lifestyle. If I live to be 100, I think I would like to live to be 100. It seems like an awfully long time to live. It is an entire century. Imagine all the changes that you would see if you lived to be 100. I had a neighbor who was 85. She used to tell me what things were like when she was a little girl. She told me what my town used to look like, what her clothes were like, and what her school was like. I used to enjoy listening to her stories. Everything was so different when she was young. Listening to her was like having history come to life. I used to try to imagine what life was like for her back then. If I was a hundred, and I had grandchildren and great-grandchildren, I would tell them stories about my childhood. I would hope that I had a good memory so that I could remember everything. If I do want to live to one hundred, I'll have to have a healthy lifestyle. Not too many people live to be that old. If I do get to be that old, I hope I'll still be mentally alert and physically agile. In my country, the Prime Minister sends a letter of congratulations to anyone who has their 100th birthday. People who live to be 100 are very special. Maybe in the future, with better medical care, 
and healthier lifestyles, more people will live to be 100. If I live to be 100, I'll have a birthday cake. But I won't put 100 candles on the cake. I could never blow out 100 candles. What I like most and least about myself. I was trying to think up the best and the worst things about myself. I think the best thing about me is that I am very friendly. I have a lot of friends and they all like me. I try to be good to my friends. I don't often have arguments with people. I think that I am quite easy to get along with. The worst thing about me is that I sometimes feel sad. Sometimes I don't feel sad for any particular reason. I just get into moods where I am depressed. Sometimes there is a reason to be sad. I was sad when my pet frog died. I was sad when I lost my favorite baseball card. On those days, I'm still nice to my friends, but inside I feel like there is a heavy weight in my chest. I think that everyone feels sadness sometimes. I try to do things that make me happy whenever I get into one of my sad moods. Last Saturday, I felt a bit sad, so I called up my friend John and asked him if he wanted to go to the movies. We went to a comedy. We laughed all the way through the movie so that by the time the movie was over, I didn't feel sad anymore. My friendliness is my best trait, and my sad moods are my worst traits. I have to work at getting over my sad moods more quickly. Being sad doesn't do anyone any good. There is no use in feeling sorry for oneself. The Trunk in the Attic Last month, my grandmother asked me if I could help her to clean out her attic. I was happy that she asked me. My grandmother says that her attic is full of junk. I think that her attic is full of treasures. I helped her to dust and vacuum the attic. I pulled and pushed around boxes and crates. I helped her to wash the floors and walls. My favorite thing that I did was to sort through the old trunk that she had up there. The trunk had a rusty latch on it. It was a bit difficult to open, but my grandmother got a knife and pried the latch open. The trunk was full of all kinds of things. There were lots of clothes. Some of the clothes had been my grandmother's. There was a blue velvet dress that she had worn to a dance when she and my grandfather were dating. It was a beautiful dress, but there were a few moth holes in it. There were some of my mother's old clothes. There was a pair of bell-bottom slacks that had bright flowers on it. I couldn't believe that my mother had ever worn something like that. There were some of my mother's old report cards. Some of her marks weren't very good. I had fun reading the report cards. There were photographs. There was a picture of my grandparents holding my mother when she was a baby. There was an old baseball glove that one of my uncles had owned. There was even one of my old dolls in there. One of her legs was missing. My grandmother said that I was rough on my dolls when I was little. I should have taken better care of my toys. There was even some old jewelry. I tried on some of the old clothes and jewelry. I told my grandmother that I liked looking through old things. My grandmother told me to keep whatever I wanted. She said that it was all junk. I still say that her trunk was full of treasures. Hot and cold. I notice that whenever it is summer, people complain about the heat. But whenever it is winter, people complain about the cold. It seems that people are never satisfied. I don't like the winter. It is usually much too cold for me. My teeth chatter and my fingers turn numb whenever the weather gets cold. It is hard for me to warm up once I start to freeze. I try to wear layers of clothes, but winter winds go through my clothes no matter how much I wear. My feet feel like they are blocks of ice on a cold January day when I walk home from school. I would not like to live in a place that had cold climate all year long. I am not comfortable when it is too cold. I like the summer. Some people say that it is hot and sticky in the summer, but I don't mind the heat at all. I love to feel the warm sunshine on my skin. I like the freedom of not having to wear heavy coats and boots. 
I am the happiest when there is a slightly cool breeze that comes along to refresh you on a hot summer day. I could live in a place with a hot climate. I would enjoy that. Of course, when you are in a place with a hot climate, there are more bugs than in places with cooler climates. I don't care for bugs. Where I live, it is very humid. The heat and moisture combine to make it uncomfortable sometimes. It is nicer when the heat is high, but the humidity is low. It would be better if I lived somewhere where it was hot, but not humid. That would be just perfect. Drugs. There are two different types of drugs. There are legal drugs and there are illegal drugs. Legal drugs are the type of drugs that the doctor gives you when you are sick. Illegal drugs are the drugs that people sell on the street. Illegal drugs are very dangerous. If someone ever wants you to try any type of substance that you are not sure about, you should always say no. People who sell drugs on the street are criminals. If they get caught, they will be sent to jail. They sell drugs to get money. They don't care that people's lives are ruined from taking drugs. If you take illegal drugs, you can become addicted to them. That means that you just have to have the drug no matter what. Some people steal from other people to get money to buy drugs. Drugs affect your mind. If you take drugs, you will not be able to think clearly. Your marks in school will drop. Your memory won't be very good. Your personality won't be the same. It is very unfortunate that some people do try drugs. They think that it won't hurt them. They are wrong. If you are smart, you will stay away from all drugs, except for the ones that the doctor gives you. Drugs are just bad news. If you know someone who is thinking about trying drugs, tell them that their entire life could be ruined. In America, they have a saying, just say no to drugs. It is a good saying, but I think I would rather say, I'm just too smart to take drugs. Weather. Sometimes I watch the weathermen on television. It is fascinating to watch him point to different areas of the country on the map. He tells us where the weather will be nice and where it will be bad. The weatherman is not always right. Weather reporting is not an exact science. Nothing is very exact when it comes to the weather. The weather department does a lot of research, but they can never be sure of exactly what will happen. Sometimes it looks like it will be clear, but the wind changes direction and clouds move in. The weathermen can warn people if there is a chance of a hurricane or a tornado. The weathermen can also warn people of floods. Sometimes entire towns have to be evacuated because of bad weather. It is important to be aware of the weather. For example, it is not good to be caught in the middle of a field when there is going to be a thunderstorm. You might want to take extra precautions if there is going to be a heavy snowstorm. You would need to be in a secure place if a hurricane or tornado was predicted. You might want to cancel a picnic if you knew that it would rain that day. The weather affects us in so many ways. Some people are really affected by dull, cloudy days. If there are no sunny days, they become very depressed. Heavy air pressure can cause some people to have headaches. Weather affects all of us in one way or another. It is always a topic of conversation. People often say things like, hello, it's a beautiful day today. Often we plan our lives and activities around the weather. So if you are planning on walking home tonight, keep an eye on the sky. Are those rain clouds up there? You might need an umbrella. The perfect place. There is a place in my mind that is pure. Everything there is beautiful. Many flowers grow and the grass is very green. The clouds are always white and fluffy. The tree's branches sweep the earth floor. You can hear the sound of a waterfall. It is roaring with life, and the water races. A bird calls in the distance, and as you listen, the sound gets closer. A flapping quite near makes me turn and look. A great, magnificent eagle flies over my head. The strength I see in his powerful wings amazes me. I am never thirsty or hungry. I live off the beauty that surrounds me in this perfect place. 
I walk on trails that lead me to breathtaking places. The beach is my favorite spot to end up. The sand between my toes is soft and cool. I love to lie down on the sand. I watch the sun go down. Sometimes the sun is a brilliant orange. The world seems like it is on fire. Waves lull me to sleep. The seagulls wake me up. In this perfect place, I have learned so much. The animals and their homes are so precious. I have learned to respect the animals. They were here first. The sounds, smells, and sights are too perfect and full of life. There is no war here, no anger or stress. I don't have to worry about pollution or destruction. My perfect world exists only in my head. Maybe if we all work hard, my fantasy can become real. Visiting the zoo. When I was a kid, I always enjoyed visiting the zoo. My family lived far away from the zoo, so we didn't go there very often. But whenever we went to the zoo, I always had a fun and interesting time. Some of the animals were very large. Of course, the elephants were huge, and they had such an unusual appearance, with their big ears and their long trunk and tusks. The giraffes were very tall, with long necks that reached high into the trees. Some of my favorite animals were big cats. The lions looked very powerful, with their big teeth and paws. The tigers were just as big and strong, with yellow and black stripes. But the bears were even larger than these cats. The polar bears, with their bright white fur, liked to swim through the water. The grizzly bears had brown fur and liked to roam around on land. The animals from Australia seemed very unusual. The kangaroos, with their strong legs and long tail, could jump great distances across the ground. The baby kangaroo could go inside its mother's pouch. Another Australian animal, the koala bear, crawled slowly in the trees. Where it ate leaves, the monkeys and apes were also very interesting. In many ways, they reminded me of people. Some of the monkeys were very small; they could use their arms, legs, and tail to swing through the trees. Some of the apes were very large. The gorilla was the largest of all. Sometimes, a big gorilla would stand up and pound his fists on his chest. To see all the animals at the zoo took almost a whole day. By the end of the day, I was very tired from walking around, but I was also very happy to see all the amazing animals from places around the world. Moving to another country. My friend Steve moved to another country. He had lived in Canada all his life, and he moved to Japan. Life in Japan was very different for Steve than what he was used to. At first, Steve suffered from culture shock. His whole life seemed different. He was not used to the way of life in Japan. Steve was not used to the large crowds of people that walked up and down the streets in Japan. In his hometown in Canada, the streets were fairly quiet. Steve had to get used to the food. In Japan, the people eat a lot of fish. Steve had never eaten much fish before. Steve wanted pizza, but it was expensive in Japan. Steve said that he had to adjust his eating habits. The people in Japan have different customs than we do here in Canada. Steve didn't want to offend anyone, so he had to learn the customs. He had to learn about what Japanese people considered polite and rude. Sometimes, in a foreign country, you can do something to insult someone without even realizing that you are being rude. At first, Steve had trouble with the language. He said that the only way to really learn the language is to talk to people. Steve talked to a lot of people. He made a lot of mistakes, but people were patient with him, and they tried to help him with his Japanese. It wasn't long before Steve felt more comfortable in his new surroundings. You have to be willing to learn new customs and a new language if you move to another country. Steve feels very comfortable in Japan and in Canada now. He is thinking about going to another country now. He thinks that he might like to try and live in Italy. 
I'm sure that he would get over his culture shock very fast if he moved there. Moving to a new country can be difficult, but if you are willing to learn, it can be a very rewarding experience. Look for the beauty. I have learned that things don't always go the way that they were planned. If something doesn't happen the way that I want it to, I try to make the best of the situation. I always try to find something good in everything that happens. Last year, I broke my ankle when I was walking on an icy sidewalk. At first, I was very upset. I was missing school, and there was a party that I wanted to go to. I couldn't do very much of anything. My ankle was very sore. I stayed home and I read a book. It was an excellent book and one that I probably would not have had time to read under normal circumstances. My friends brought my homework to my house and we had some really nice visits while they were here. I had to accept the fact that I couldn't go anywhere on my broken ankle, so I made the best of a bad situation. Once I lost my way when I was out camping. I ended up in a very large field. I was afraid that nobody would find me, but I calmed myself down and took time to examine all the interesting wild flowers in the field. My family did find me. They were surprised at how calm I was. I have learned that there is something valuable inside every adventure and something beautiful inside every person. We had a new boy who came into our class. His clothes weren't in style, and he was not particularly handsome. Some of the boys and girls made fun of him. Sometimes people can be really cruel. He seemed to handle it all right, but inside, I knew that it must hurt. Some of my friends and I invited him out with us. We found out that he had a terrific sense of humor, and he is probably one of the nicest people that I have ever met. He has since become one of my best friends. It makes me ashamed when someone that I know judges someone by how they look. It isn't fair to do that. You'll find that something good comes out of almost every situation. You'll find something good about almost everyone that you meet if you look hard enough. If something doesn't work out the way you planned it, just make the best of the situation. Look for the beauty in everything. My doll. When I was an infant, I got a rag doll. It was a very plain little doll, and it wore a clown outfit and a clown's hat. I used to take that doll to bed with me every night. I couldn't go to bed without my doll. My mother used to pretend that the doll was talking to me. She would make the doll dance and sing songs. I would talk to the doll. My mother would answer for the doll, but I was a baby, and I thought that the doll was actually talking to me. That doll was my best friend. I took her everywhere. One time, I took her to a store with me, and I left her on a shelf in the store. We were halfway home when I realized that I didn't have my doll with me. I was very upset. My mother and I rushed back to the store. My doll was still there. I was so relieved. I hugged my doll and I promised myself that I would never leave her anywhere again. I couldn't imagine life without that doll. Through the years, the doll became less important in my life. I had other things to do, but the doll still sat on my bed during the day, and I still took it to bed at night. I gave that doll a lot of love when I was little. In fact, I loved that doll so much that she looks tattered and torn now. There are parts of her face and hands that are almost worn away. I had a lot of other toys when I was little, but none of them were ever so important as that doll. I don't play with toys anymore, but that doll is still in my room. She sits in a special chair in the corner. I'll always have that doll, no matter how worn out she is. I'll always keep her and cherish her as part of my early childhood. Early morning. <gasps> Yawn. I'm so tired. I don't like getting up in the morning. I wish I could sleep in until noon. My mom has to come into my room and shake my feet. Get up, you lazy girl, she says. It's time to rise and shine. It's a beautiful day. I raise my head, mumble and turn over, putting my pillow over my head. My mom yanks my pillow from off my head and starts tickling me. Okay, I'll get up, I shriek. The sun is so bright that I squint. I think I will go outside and play. I can't wait to get up now. My mom cooks me breakfast. I have eggs, bacon, toast, and orange juice. When I finish my breakfast, I brush my teeth, comb my hair, wash my face, and then change into my play clothes. I choose a bright pink and yellow tank top with jean shorts and blue sandals. 
My bike is in the garage where my dad keeps the cars and tools. As I pedal, my hair flies out behind me. I keep my mouth shut so that bugs don't get in. I am going down a big hill now. I can hardly pedal anymore. My legs are moving so fast. I hang onto my handlebars tightly. I don't want to fall off. I finally am able to slow down as the road becomes level. I turn a corner and decide to go back home. I realize I now have to ride up the hill. I know I will be tired when I get to the top. I think that I will have some water now before I start to go up. Mmm, it tastes great. It is so clean and cold. Well, I know that I have a big trip ahead of me, so I need to get going. Bye-bye. The wedding. We went into the church and sat down. There were pretty flowers at the front. There was beautiful organ music playing. The church was full of people dressed up nicely. Everyone was waiting to see the beautiful bride walk up the aisle. A hush, an intake of breath. There she was. Oh, she was so beautiful. She had a lovely long white dress with pretty lace and beads. Her hair was swept up off from her face. There were curls flowing down her back. Instead of a veil, she had little flowers in her hair. Her bouquet of tiny flowers was very, very pretty. Her dad looked very proud of her. He looked just a little sad, too. At the front of the church, the groom stood waiting. He had a beautiful, tender smile on his face. He took his bride's hand as her dad left her there. They smiled at each other. The minister read, prayed, and offered some words of advice to the lovely couple. Someone sang a pretty song. The groom slipped the simple wedding band on the bride's finger. She struggled a little to put a band on his finger. Pretty soon, the minister said they were now husband and wife. They kissed. We all stood as they walked down the aisle to live the rest of their lives together as Mr. and Mrs. We cried. Airplane Ride Tasha signed a piece of paper which gave her a chance to win a free airplane ride. She put her name, address, and telephone number on that piece of paper. A few days later, she got a telephone call. It was the man that was holding the ticket draw. Tasha didn't think she would win, but the man on the telephone said she did. She listened as the man told her where she would have to go to get her free airplane ride. She had to go near the town of Grimsby. She was allowed to pick a friend to go with her on the airplane ride. Tasha was so happy. She asked her twin sister, Tanya, to go with her. Tanya was very excited. Neither of them had been on an airplane before. When they got to the airplane center, Tasha and Tanya were nervous. They knew the airplane was small, so that meant only the pilot and them were going to be in the plane. Their mom took a picture of them beside the plane before they left. Tasha and Tanya hopped into the plane. They put their seatbelts on and got ready for takeoff. Tasha got to sit in the very front, right beside the pilot. Tanya sat behind Tasha. The girls laughed nervously as the plane started rolling down the runway. They went faster and faster, trees passing by quickly. There was a powerful surge making everyone's head jerk back. The plane started lifting off the ground. Up, up, and away! They were up off the ground and flying high in the sky. It seemed as though they could get anywhere within a matter of seconds. They flew from Grimsby to Beamsville where they saw their high school, then on to St. Catharines and then Niagara Falls. They even flew over top of their house. They took pictures of their house. They could see their pond from way up there too. The pilot asked Tasha if she wanted to fly the plane. Sure, Tasha said. So Tasha took the steering handle and began to fly the plane. She didn't really know how to fly it, so when she pulled the handle down, the plane shot upward. Both of the girls squealed. Tasha leveled the plane and flew smoothly from then on. 
Soon it was time to go back to Grimsby. The pilot took over again. We braced ourselves as the landing strip got nearer. The landing went smoothly with Tasha and Tanya beaming as they looked out at the ground. They hopped off of the plane, thanked the pilot, and ran to tell their mum about their wonderful experience. The Middle Child I am the middle child of the family. I think it is nice in some ways. I have an older sister from whom I can borrow clothes from if she lets me. I get to meet my older sister's friends, although sometimes they think that I am too young to be with them. I have a younger brother. He is cute, but sometimes I have to babysit him. There are good things and bad things about being the middle child. My sister is the eldest child. She was the first child, so she spent time alone with my parents. She got lots of attention when she was first born. They took lots and lots of pictures of her. All her clothes and toys were brand new. I got her hand-me-downs. My parents were the strictest with her. They had lots of rules for her to follow. She is the first child, so they want her to be perfect. My younger brother is the baby of the family. I think that we all spoil him. We let him get away with some things that he shouldn't get away with. His room is always messy, and my mother never gets mad about that. She gets upset with me if my room is messy. She tells me that I'm old enough to keep a nice, clean room. It's no good thinking about which position you would like to hold in the family. You really don't have a choice about that. I think I like being the middle child. I can relate to my older sister and my younger brother. Yes, I think the middle is probably a good place to be. Advice to a Student from a Foreign Country my advice to a student from a foreign country would be to talk, talk, talk. Talk as much as you can to the people who live in the place that you are visiting. Talk to them and practice your new language skills. Learn all the funny sayings and different words that make up their language. Talking is the only way to really learn a language. Listen to people and talk to people. If you talk to people, you will also learn about their culture. I have a friend from Japan. His name is Nori. He often comes to see me just so that he can practice his English. He gets confused about words that sound the same but mean different things. He was asking me about the words see and see. I explained to him that they do sound the same but they are spelled differently and they mean different things. Nori is learning some of our funny sayings from different people. One morning, I asked him how he was, and he said, Alive and kicking. Another morning, when I asked him how he was, he said, So-so. He laughs about these strange sayings that we use. He is learning English quickly, because he spends a lot of time with English-speaking people. He likes to have lunch with my friends and me because we ask him questions about his homeland, and he answers us in English. If he doesn't understand our questions, we spend time explaining what we mean to him. He says that he enjoys being here. He thinks that the people are very friendly. We enjoy speaking to him and helping him to learn English. We also enjoy learning about his country. It is enjoyable for us to meet new people and learn about new things. Hobbies Hobbies are activities that people do in their spare time for the sake of enjoyment. A hobby usually involves work of some kind, but the work is fun for the person who does it. Some people enjoy their hobbies very much and like to spend much time on those hobbies. There are many different hobbies that people enjoy. One of the most popular hobbies is gardening. Many people enjoy growing beautiful flowers or tasty vegetables in a garden near their house or apartment. 
People who have a garden enjoy seeing the results of their work when flowers show their bright, beautiful colors. But gardeners also enjoy the tasks of gardening itself. They like to work in the soil, planting and watering their flowers. Another popular hobby is photography. Some people enjoy taking pictures of the people and places around them. People who enjoy photography may sometimes buy expensive cameras that allow interesting photographs to be taken. But even people who have only a basic camera can still take beautiful pictures. For many people, car repair is a favorite hobby. Some people enjoy looking at the engine and other parts of their cars. Those people make repairs or improvements to their cars. Of course, this is a useful hobby, but many people enjoy fixing up a car simply because they enjoy working with cars. Some people collect objects as a hobby. For example, some people collect postage stamps and some people collect coins. It can be very satisfying to find the missing parts of one's collection, especially when the stamps or coins are very rare. Of course, these are just a few of the many hobbies that people enjoy. Do you have any hobbies that you enjoy? Do people have the right to smoke in public? My father used to smoke. He got very ill. The doctor told him that he had to quit smoking. My father tried for a long time to quit. It was very difficult for him. Smoking is an addiction. After many months, my father finally gave up smoking, but he still craved a cigarette once in a while. He says that quitting smoking is the hardest thing that he has ever done. When my father did smoke, he smoked everywhere. He smoked in restaurants, stores, and many public buildings. Now, you are not allowed to smoke in a lot of public places. When my father smoked, the rules were not so strict. People could smoke just about anywhere. It really wasn't fair to the people who didn't smoke. Their clothes always smelled like smoke, and they breathed in secondhand smoke. Some people think that the secondhand smoke is actually worse for you than if you smoke yourself. People would smoke in their houses, and very young children would inhale the smoke that was in the air. Some people still smoke in their houses, and their children breathe in the smoke. Some restaurants have areas for smokers and non smokers, but usually the smoke drifts from one area to the other. There are some businesses that have banned smoking altogether. Personally, I think that smoking in public places should be completely banned. I don't think that I should have to breathe in another person's smoke if I choose not to smoke myself. It wouldn't be fair for a non smoker to get lung cancer because they had to be in a place where smokers were allowed to light up. I know that smoking is a powerful addiction and that it is very difficult to quit, but smokers should restrict their smoking to places where there is nobody else around. Lung cancer is an awful disease. Nobody should have to suffer with lung cancer. People should be educated about the dangers of smoking. Smoking should be banned in public places, but eventually I would like to believe that fewer people will smoke. It would be nice to live in a smoke free environment. My favorite bedtime story. Every night when I was little, my mother would read me a bedtime story. My favorite story was Tom's Midnight Garden. This was a story by Philippa Pierce. It was quite a long book, and it took quite a few nights for my mother to read the entire book to me. In Tom's Midnight Garden, 
Tom moves to the city to stay with his aunt and uncle. He is very bored at their apartment. They have no children, so Tom has nothing to do. One night, the clock strikes 13 times. Tom knows that this is impossible. A clock can only strike up to 12 times. He sneaks downstairs and goes outside. When he goes outside, there is a wonderful garden that wasn't there the day before. The next day, Tom goes outside and finds there is no garden. The garden only seems to appear at night. Every night, Tom slips out to this wonderful garden and meets some people in the garden. He meets a girl named Hattie. Hattie and Tom become very good friends in this garden. Some very strange things happen in this book. There are some coincidences that keep you guessing about what is really going on. The surprise ending is wonderful. I really enjoyed Tom's Midnight Garden, and I was very sad when my mother and I came to the end of the book. I felt that I had visited the magical garden with Tom. It is a book that I will remember all my life. My Sister's Visit to Canada My sister had never been to Canada, but came for a visit last April. I picked her up at the airport in Toronto and drove her through the traffic and multi-lane highways, past the grapevines and peach trees to Niagara Falls, where I live. She was very tired from the flight and soon slept. The first day, we walked to see the falls. The spray from the falls drifts high into the air and across the people standing to watch. There are people from all over the world watching the water and using their cameras. Because it was April, there was still ice beside the water, huge chunks of ice that looked like white rocks. In the river, there were floating pieces of ice moving downstream. The next day, we went to the town where the Niagara River joins Lake Ontario. The weather was warm. We walked a long way, and our feet were hot, so we went down to the edge of the water to put our feet in. One toe in was enough. The water was so cold it made our feet ache. A piece of ice drifted beside our feet. I put one foot in for a second, then out, as the pain of the cold went right through me. My sister could not understand how it could be so warm, but there was still ice. Another day, we went to see my daughter, she is living on a farm, an hour's drive away. We walked through her trees. The buds were starting to turn into leaves. We stopped and looked at the spring wildflowers. We climbed across a creek by walking over a fallen tree. We saw the footprints of raccoons by the water. There was fresh air and sunshine and blue sky. On the way home, we stopped for hamburgers and fries at a drive through restaurant. She had never been to a drive through restaurant before. Then we went to a donut shop. There are no donut shops where she lives. There was a choice of 20 different types of donuts, some round, some with holes, some with frosting, some with jam inside. Each was different. The days passed quickly, and soon it was time to take her back to the airport. Some of the trees now had leaves. Some of the tulips were now blooming. It was hard to say goodbye to my sister. I hope we can visit again soon. A Summer Sunday Today the sun was warm. The sky was blue with a few white clouds. It was a good day to pick strawberries. It was a good day to go to the beach. I drove to a pick-your-own farm where people can pick their own fruit and buy it. There the fruit is very fresh and delicious. The owner of the farm gave everyone a row to pick their strawberries. Everyone was wearing sun hats. I knelt down on the straw between the rows and picked the big juicy red berries. I tasted one. It was warm from the sun. When I bit into it, 
the juice was sweet and strong. When three big pails were full, I went to pay for them and picked up some recipes for some strawberry desserts. I packed two of the pails in a cooler with some ice, and the other one we would eat at the beach. I met my daughter at the beach. She had a soft pink blanket on the sand. This beach is beside a lake, and across the lake, about fifty kilometers away, the large city can sometimes be seen. Today, the wind blew cooler air across the lake over the people on the beach. There were children playing in the water. One man helped his son dig holes in the sand, and the water ran into the holes. One lady held her children's hands and walked down into the water. Families climbed over the rocks and sat on the last rock where the water was deep. Teenagers rode bicycles and rollerblades along the path beside the beach. Adults walked and ran along this path, carrying water bottles around their waists. We sat on the blanket and ate sandwiches of meat and lettuce and strawberries from the pail. We talked and read books and lay in the sun, relaxing. We wore sunscreen, but our skin was getting hot. How cold was the water? We walked across the sand that almost burned our feet to the edge of the water. She went right in and lay down, floating. I put my toes in and felt the chill through my body. I went up to my knees, then my thighs, but that was far enough. My whole body was cooled down. I headed back to the blanket to lay in the sun again. Soon it was time to go home. She was coming to my house for supper. We drove down the highway with the windows open and our hair blowing in the warm breeze. We cut the strawberries up and made a strawberry dessert with cake and ice cream. We sat outside in the backyard under the maple trees with the birds singing around us and ate our supper. It was a perfect ending to a relaxing summer day. Christmas. In most Western countries, Christmas is the biggest holiday of the year. People gather with their families to celebrate this day, which occurs on December twenty-fifth each year. The holiday of Christmas celebrates the birth of Jesus Christ. In the Christian religion, Jesus Christ is recognized as the Son of God. During the Christmas season, many people celebrate the events of the birth of Jesus Christ. For example, they recall the three wise men who visited Jesus Christ shortly after his birth. Also, they recall that Jesus Christ was born in a manger, a place where horses are kept, because his parents could not find a place to stay. In Western countries, Christmas is also celebrated by many people who are not religious. People view Christmas as a time for being together with one's relatives. Children, parents, and grandparents gather to exchange presents and to eat special foods. The tradition of giving gifts at Christmas is unusual in one way. When children go to bed on the evening before Christmas, they hang large socks called stockings in their house. When they wake up on Christmas morning, the stockings have been filled with toys and candy. According to tradition, the presents have been given by a fat man who wears a white beard and a red suit. This man, called Santa Claus, flies around the world in a sled that is pulled by reindeer. He stops at each house and flies down the chimney to deliver his presents. In the weeks before Christmas, children are usually very well behaved. Their parents tell them that Santa Claus will only give presents to children who are good. Another Christmas tradition is the Christmas tree. People put a small tree inside their house and decorate it with various pretty objects. Nowadays, most people use an artificial tree instead of a real tree. The tradition of the Christmas tree is actually older than Christmas itself. The people of Europe celebrated the beginning of the winter season in this way, even before Christianity reached Europe. Christmas is certainly one of the most important and most enjoyed holidays in Western countries.